Mommy has pink. <laughs> Mommy has pink. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start now, okay? Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is the Caffeinated Classroom, and my name is Marie. Today we are going to talk about uh, something very near and dear to my heart. I am a very, very, very firm believer that Shakespeare should be seen. Shakespeare should be seen way before it is read, if read at all. And my reasoning is threefold. Number one, if you look at the historical context, Shakespeare, I asked you not to do that, Shakespeare wrote plays. He did not write his plays to be uh, written down and mass produced. He wrote them as they were being put up on a stage and he had a whole troupe of actors around him and he would scribble down his ideas and get like a rough draft going on like the night before they had rehearsal and then they would be on stage and he would be writing down with his quill lines as they went and the actors would come, they would all look at the same sheet of paper, boom, they would start their rehearsals. So it truly was not, he wasn't sitting down going, oh, my audience is going to absolutely love reading all of this work. They're gonna, he's, he was saying, wow, we are gonna sell out tickets because these plays are so amazing and they were written for actors to be put up on a stage live. He uses all sorts of language that leads to that, which I'll speak to in my second point. And it's just, it's a performing art. You don't go to a painting and start to touch the paintings. You don't go to music and smell a song, you listen to it with your ears. Plays and performing arts are meant to be consumed in different ways than literature is. And one of those ways is by enjoying a live performance. And if not, if not a live performance, then a recorded performance, but a performance nonetheless. It should absolutely be something where audiences can go and enjoy not only a visual, not only an auditory, but all of it combined be there in a moment and see it all come to life on a stage or on the screen. Another thing, if you're really looking at like the historical context, um, it was pretty rare that somebody got their hands, right when they were written during Elizabethan England, it was pretty rare that somebody got their hands on a manuscript of a play by William Shakespeare. It took so much work to reproduce. Sonnets, on the other hand, were written so that they could be read and shared in the salons of the noble and the rich in England and around the world. But these plays were not meant for that. And so when somebody got their hands on a script, it meant that number one, they had a whole lot of money and they had some great influence that they could get their hands on a script. And number two, they were entertaining and they had the uppity up muckety mucks of society in their parlor or in their salon of their house and they were reenacting something that they had already seen. And the operative thing here is that they loved these plays and they wanted to get their hands on a script because they had seen it performed at the Globe Theater and they wanted to bring it home and bring it to life in their own home with their friends and so everybody could think they were so fabulous. The rhythm of the verse that Shakespeare writes in lends itself for performance. It's melodic. It is meant to help. Yes, baby. Oh, thank you. Can I show the camera? Yes. This is a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Who's this? You. Yeah, and who's this? I messed up that one for you. Oh, that's that's like mommy's ghost, and this is mommy. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that's your smiley messed up balloon. That's my smiley messed up balloon, and this yeah. is just me. Yeah. I love my hair. Thank you. No, thank you. You're welcome. The rhythm of Shakespeare's writing, of his verse, lends itself very well to performance. Shakespeare found that as he wrote in this rhythm and with rhyme, it was easier for actors to memorize because they had to memorize on the fly because, like I said just a minute ago, they didn't have their own copy of the script necessarily. He was handwriting it as they went. And so maybe they would have a couple pages here and there, little pieces of lines, but the the song-like nature 
of the verse lent itself very, very well to easy memorization. And anybody out there who's ever been in their school play or some sort of a pageant or is a true actor knows that memorization is one of the most difficult parts of preparing for a performance. So he was trying to make it as easy as he could. He uses a ton of figurative language because it was meant to liven things up and to allow his actors to have something really meaty to work with. And the beauty of the language is part of what makes it so amazing to watch these things brought up on their feet. And people always say, whenever I, I myself as a student and as an, a consumer of Shakespeare, and um, even as a teacher, everybody always says, you know, I really didn't understand it, and then I saw it, and it totally made sense. So why wouldn't we show kids Shakespeare before we make them read it? And making them sit around and just like popcorn read Romeo and Juliet, number one, makes me want to stick a fork in my eye. Like, it legitimately just That's does. Bad. I know, it's bad. And it bores the students to tears, and it should, it's super duper boring. And it just, I think it just does Shakespeare an absolute disservice. And this leads me to my second point. This is all about the format and the structure of Shakespeare's plays. Not necessarily his sonnets, but his plays specifically. It's like you're going to take a song and you're like looking at the song lyrics and you're reading the song lyrics and then you get asked, what do you think of the melody? And you're like, uh, I don't know, I didn't hear it. That to me is the exact same thing as saying, like, okay, read this Shakespeare play, ninth grader, go ahead and read Romeo and Juliet, and then tell me what you think of the play. They don't, they don't know what's going on necessarily. This is not something that is meant to be enjoyed just as a piece of literature. It's meant to be something that is enjoyed with more senses. Dianic pentameter is meant to give it this nice rhythm that, like I said before, makes it easier for actors to memorize. It also is supposed to sound really good, and it does sound really good when it is performed up on a stage. Point number three is that we have technology now. Really? <laughs> Thank you. This is very helpful. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yep, I'm a mom and I work full time. Yep. It is the 21st century and we have very ready access, immediate access through the internet to great recordings of performances, both live performances and films that um, put Shakespeare on its feet. So why not use them? Like it's not a cop out. It's a performed art. Y use the Use it. And that leads me to something that I really firmly believe, which is performance is text. It's not just something that has to be written down in order to be literary or to be uh, curricular text. Performance is text, a performed song, a performed play, a performed dance. How do you appreciate dance without seeing it performed? If you just hear about the choreography or you just see steps like, put down on a piece of paper and kind of like written out, you can't actually truly appreciate that art form. And theater is the exact same way. It takes all of these elements. It takes a live body and it takes words and it takes action to bring it all together along with scenery and props and costume and sometimes special effects and music and all of these different things to bring it to life because it is alive and it is breathing. And of course, being able to watch live Shakespeare is the absolute best thing in the whole entire world. And I'll probably do a video soon on different ways that you can kind of arrange that where it's not students performing, which I mean, can be kind of fun, but it loses a lot of the meaning of the text. Instead, having like a company come in, an educational company or a local theater company, they'll come in or you can even go to them if you can get transportation and you can get the funding to do that. And it is the most enriching experience. I just wanna leave you with my final thoughts. Wouldn't you enjoy teaching Shakespeare so, 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 so much more 
if it was lively and exciting and you're not having to shove it down your students throats or just like drag them through it and if you don't have to like sit in your classroom for an entire week while you popcorn read the first three acts and then you give up because oh my gosh it's taking so long because the kids can't pronounce the words and they don't understand the structure and they don't understand what the rhythm is supposed to sound like and it's so dry. Shakespeare was edgy during its time and it was like the thing to be seen at, you see and be seen at the Globe Theater. And why can't we bring that back? And some teachers are so amazing at teaching Shakespeare and they're extremely comfortable with it. I'm one of those teachers who's comfortable with it. I don't know that I'm amazing at it, but I enjoy it. Um, and others are not as comfortable. And so make it easy on yourself, enjoy it. Let yourself have fun because if you're having fun, the kids are going to have fun and vice versa. If the kids are having fun, you're gonna have fun and they're gonna learn something about it and you're going to watch them really enjoy the classics and enjoy them in a whole new way and make connections to their own lives and to modern society and how these themes keep coming back and that's why we still teach Shakespeare. It's because it's all about the human condition and it's about situations that human beings find themselves in that are not fleeting. They're not unique to any one place and time. Yes, the situations that the, the characters are in are unique to that specific social and historical context of the play, but love is universal, death is universal, tragedy and comedy are things that make the human experience what it is. And so showing students that even centuries ago, you know, people still had crushes on other people and they still got into fights with their parents and they still had misunderstandings with others that led to grave consequences. They can just kind of see that we are all human beings and we're all really connected. I hope that you are able to find a new refreshing way to teach Shakespeare or that you are just kind of rejuvenated in teaching Shakespeare with your students in your own classroom. If you would like some curriculum for your own classroom, I have prepared a bunch of the different things that I do and I made them really short and concise little PDFs that you can either run off, like print and run off directly from the download or you can take and do whatever you want with it. They're absolutely free. I'm going to be recording a few more videos, one for each of the PDFs that I do. So a Shakespeare intro, how I introduce Shakespeare in my classroom, a um, beginning a play, like some activities that I would do and assignments that I would do for the very beginning of a play, um, a Shakespeare poetry slam that I love to do with really any of the plays, most of the comedies where they've got a bunch of arguing, but even Romeo and Juliet, like there's the whole argument between the Montagues and the Capulets, I bite my thumb at you, etc. That's got some great insults. And so you put together like a whole po poetry slam and the kids have a ton of fun with it. And it's, it's super smart too. A whole little thing on sonnets where I go over the basic like rules of sonnets and uh, students write their own original sonnet. And then last but not least, the adaptation. If you would like to look at these five different areas of curriculum with teaching Shakespeare in your classroom, please visit www.thecaffeinatedclassroom.com. And if you enter your email, I will send you all five and I will be posting videos on how I teach each of these little individual sections in my Shakespeare unit. And take a moment, please, and press the subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.